Good evening. Welcome to tonight's Bible study with the Lombard Church of the Nazarene. We're so glad that you joined us tonight as we've been talking about spiritual disciplines over the past few weeks. And tonight we're going to be talking about another spiritual discipline, journaling. So we've talked about praying and fasting and meditating on God's word, solitude and listening. And like I said tonight, we're going to talk about journaling. These are all spiritual disciplines, things that we do to help us grow spiritually, help us to um, become more connected with God, because truly that's what we're called to do. We are to become more godly and to be in better relationship with God. That takes work. It takes effort. And that's why it's called a discipline, because it takes discipline in our lives in order to uh, accomplish this relationship with God. And so the spiritual disciplines are things that, uh, that people have designated as ways uh, that we can strengthen our relationship with God or tools that will help us in that relationship. Uh, we've talked about praying and fasting and how um, sometimes we need to get away in solitude, away from all the hustle bustle of life and maybe need to give up some electronics or noise from our life, um, maybe fast food while we're doing that. And really listen to God and talk to God and meditate on his word and, and let God speak to us. Well, uh, and we gave examples with each of those on from the Bible of how Jesus and others in the Bible prayed and how they fasted and how they meditated on God's word and so on. Tonight, journaling, though, is, is one that we don't necessarily see Jesus carrying a notebook around with him in the Bible and writing things down. Um, we don't see that example, but it's something that uh, is used in our lives today that helps us to pray, helps us to meditate on God's word, helps us to listen sometimes. And so we are going to look at some scriptures tonight that kind of lead us into that direction as we talk about journaling. Uh, Proverbs 4, verses 25 through 26 say this, Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Amen. This scripture here, if we look at it closely, it says, Let us look straight ahead. And, and we need to be focused. In other words, when I read that scripture, it, talks, uh, it speaks to me about being focused. And to give thought to the way we are living, the way we are walking. And uh, so we're supposed to be thinking about that. Sometimes we can get real busy in the hustle bustle of things and we can go from here to here and just react. Uh, but we're called to sometimes slow down. Journaling is a, a, a tool that helps us slow down and stay focused. Um, when we take out a notebook, or uh, nowadays you could take out a tablet, uh, you could take out a computer, a laptop, you can, uh, there are so many ways you can record, but by doing so and writing something down or typing something out, it causes us to stop and slow down and to focus. It helps us to really think about the prayer that we're saying if we're typing out a prayer. It could really uh, cause us to, to think about the scripture that we are typing out or the questions that we might have. It helps us to stay on track. And so journaling, like I said, it's, it doesn't say here in Proverbs 4, we should journal. But it's telling us we need to stay focused and we need to give careful thought. We need to be thinking and be very intentional about what we are doing and how we are living. And journaling is one of those tools that helps us. Um, there are different ways. When I say journaling, this is a broad topic because people journal in different ways. For some people, journaling means they're writing down their prayers. So they're not just saying, oh God, help me with this, this, and this, amen. They're actually writing letters to God. And, and w what a great thing. That helps them focus on God. Some people actually write down their prayer requests. Uh, God, um, people, these are people that need help. These are things that are needed. And also keep record of their answers to those prayers and see uh, over time how God answers prayers and how faithful he is. And it helps them on their path to know that God is with them. 
Others write down spiritual truths. Maybe they something they read in the, God's word or they heard from a message and they, they write down things that seem to pop out to them and speak to them and they can go back and remember those things and pray about those things. Others write down sermon notes or uh, Bible study notes as they attend a, a service like that. Others write down specific events that happened in their life that they want to remember and look back upon. Or a season in their life when it was a really difficult time, a really wonderful time. They, they journal and write those things down. Some keep a praise journal where they just write down praise you God for this and this and this and this and whenever they're down they go and turn to that and it just helps them praise God. Some use a journal for a topical Bible study. They might put down a word like faith and every time they come across something about faith they write it in there and it helps them understand faith better. And, and like I said earlier, people sometimes just use it in all these ways or different forms of this way, these ways to just remember how God is faithful and good to us. But again, it's a tool that could help us be fixed upon Jesus and to make sure our ways are aligned with his. Habakkuk is an Old Testament man who questions God, uh, not understanding why things are happening in his life. Can you relate? <laughs> and so God resp uh, responds to him and his question. And the first thing that God says to him in Habakkuk 2, 2, is it says here, the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so the herald may run with it. And I just point this out to you because God is emphasizing something with Habakkuk here. I'm going to answer you, but I want you to write this down and I want it to be recorded so that um, the herald or somebody who runs or somebody who uh, proclaims something can have it and it can be clear and written down. You ever play that game telephone or whisper down the alley, you know how it can get messed up. When God speaks, sometimes it's good to write it down so that it could be clear. When God gives revelation, clarity, writing it down helps. I don't know if any of you find yourselves to be um, a visual learner. Some of you might be an audio learner. Uh, we have different styles of learning, but writing something down helps us to retain and remember things. And isn't it important to remember what God is speaking in our lives, that revelation? And that's what he tells Habakkuk. Write it down and make it plain on tablets. So make it clear. What is God saying? What does this mean? What is this saying about God? What is this saying about me? Write it down. And you know, I'm not saying in the Bible they, they everybody could journal. Not everybody could write. Not everybody could uh, record the things on scrolls. Not everybody had those resources, not like we do today. Um, but God makes it, uh, emphasizes this with a backup. Write it down. The psalmist in Psalm 45 um, it says this, my heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is a pen of a skillful writer. Amen. So here we read that he's, he's reciting verses to the king. Uh, and he says, my tongue is a pen of a skillful writer. Uh, he's reciting scripture. And he said it's like he's writing it. It's like the pen of a a skillful writer. Um, you know, it's important for us to be able to write things on our heart. And for some of us, it's we write it with a pen, and that's how it gets written on our heart. That 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 piece of paper or that um, computer becomes an image of our heart. And as we type or as we write, it's being printed onto our hearts as well. Uh, do you ever use that paper where you write on it and you lift it up and there's a carbon paper or a copy underneath? Some of you <laughs> might be too young for that, but some of you know, uh, as we write things down, sometimes it helps it to be recorded onto our heart. And um, we see this example here with the psalmist. Um, now in Deuteronomy, I just want to throw out another biblical example of writing here. Deuteronomy 31, we read that Moses is dying and Moses has led the people and and now his season of leadership is ending and Joshua is taking over as leader and they're going to go to the promised land and God's letting them know that guess, people are going to forget and people are going to go astray even in the promised land so he says I want you to do something he says now write this down uh, write down this song 
and teach it to the Israelites and have them sing it so that it may be a witness for me against them. So I, God wants them to record what's going to happen and what he says is going to happen. And he says, and, and record it down and put, make it a song, put music to it and have them sing it. Uh, and that's a, a wonderful way for us to remember and learn things. Uh, I was doing some books of the Bible with some people the other day, and one of the persons said, uh, I, I learned a song of the books of the Bible, and that's how I know. <laughs> and so, yeah, singing, right? Uh, it works. Well, it begins by writing it down and letting it become part of you. Um, and so he says, write this down. Make it a song and pass it. Um, and so sometimes the things that we write down are not just intended for ourselves, but for others. Who knows how God will use the things that he's doing in our lives. And sometimes it's easy for us to just kind of go, okay, I, I get it. And we move on and we kind of forget it. And so writing things down helps us to stop and remember and to refer back to, and sometimes even share with others and uh, pull out that journal in your Bible study uh, or with others in prayer time and share that this is what God spoke to me about or this is what happened in my life and I want to share it with you. Not saying you have to sing it, but if you want to, uh, that might be an option. <laughs> you know, and if you think about it, the Bible itself is a recording for all of us. It was recorded down on paper and was passed from, to, from person to person. There's also oral things that are passed from generation to generation, but there's something about the written word of God. Jeremiah chapter 30, he says, uh, this is what the Lord says, the God of Israel says, write in a book all the words that I have spoken to you. He's saying here, I want you to write it down, everything that is happening to you uh, as a record for others to hear and know, right? He's writing this down and here we are reading uh, from Jeremiah and what God spoke to Jeremiah a long, long time ago. There's power in writing the word of God. Um, we see uh, one more example here in Esther. Uh, many of you know the story of Esther. She ends up becoming queen and married to the king of Persia. And, and one day, it says here in Esther chapter 6, verse 1, On that night the king could not sleep, and so he gave orders to bring the book of memorable deeds, the Chronicles. And they were read before the king. And as you know, God reveals something to him that he, he forgot about as he's reading through these memorable deeds, these Chronicles. And so um, in this king's life, he had documented memorable things that were happening, and he recorded it in his life. And he would go back and have somebody read to him, oh, remember this and this happened, remember this and this happened, remember this guy, he did this. And um, maybe for us, sometimes it's good for us to write down memorable things that happened in our lives and, um, and refer back to it. It can be very rewarding and important to us. So the psalmist says in 119, verse 27, Make me understand the ways of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. You remember how I said early on that there are many different ways we can journal. journal. It might be to remember certain things that happened in, in your life. It might be what God has done and what he brought you through, but it might be just to remember God's will. We talked about meditating on God's word. Well, sometimes meditating on God's word doesn't mean you just have to have a Bible open and you just sit there and you look at it. Maybe you need to write down those words. Somebody was sharing with our youth the other night about uh, how she journals and circles certain words and underlying certain words. Somebody else shared with our youth as they're learning how to study the Bible, um, how they draw pictures in the margins that speak to them an image uh, of what is being said there on those pages. Uh, there are many different ways where we can meditate on God's word. Well, how do we meditate? Well, maybe it's to write it down. Maybe it's to circle, highlight things. Maybe it's to ask questions. Maybe we need a notebook to carry around with us as we're talking to God throughout the day. God, remember this question. Can you speak to me? Help, give me understanding. Help me with this. So meditating on God's word is another um, reason why we can journal. Uh, 
Now, not from the Bible, but here, I just shared one thing here from the Intermountain Healthcare. Um, they put an article out that says, hey, uh, journaling is healthy. It's, they go on to say it reduces stress, it keeps memory sh more sharp, it boosts our mood and helps our emotional health. Amen. And so they're saying it's healthy for you. PositivePsychology.com says uh, they have a list of 85 benefits to journaling. Um, I read in different places and articles that uh, people are saying that journaling is healthy and according to healthcare and to science um, and that it can even improve your immune system. Wow, go figure. But uh, the point is, is that there is something positive in our life when we slow down and we pause and we write things down very good very healthy and and we see how the psalmist and other people in the Bible just, just talk about slowing down being focused concentrating on what God has for them Psalm 111 verse 2 says this great are the works of the Lord they are pondered by all who delight in them you know, God is doing so much in our lives every week. Uh, I keep a little book, uh, a notebook, that I, I keep with me most of the time. And each week, I try to write something down that God is doing within this local body. Uh, and uh, it's amazing, and it helps me go back and I look at it at the end of the year or throughout the year sometimes and just say, oh, look at this. You remember this person and what God did with them and what God did with this person. Praise the Lord. I want to dwell on the works of the Lord. And it says here, great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Do you delight in what God is doing? You know, sometimes it's easy to be focused on all the negative that's happening in the world. Do you delight on what God is doing good? Ponder them. Think about those things. Dwell on those things. And so I want to ponder on the good things that God is doing. It excites me. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me moving. It keeps me focused on God. Amen. So journaling. Uh, it has a, had a great impact on my life, Kiana's life. We have taken moments in our life when we specifically recorded great things that God has done. When we fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. When we went through a season of wilderness in our life. Um, we recorded some miracles in our lives when God healed Kiana at one point in her life and when he really came through and when we needed him at another point in our life. And sometimes it's good to go back and to read those things and to remember our God and how faithful he is. Uh, I said to you, I record some praises and highlights that God is doing within the body of Christ. We could also record highlight in our Bible. We can make notes and journal within our Bibles. We can keep a, a notebook and write questions or write prayers or write prayer requests and answers to prayer. There are so many things that we could do to help us slow down and pause. Now like I said, the Bible doesn't say thou shalt journal. <laughs> but journaling is one of those tools that helps us to pray. It helps us when we fast. It helps us meditate on God's word. It helps us to listen sometimes and just be still before God. Journaling um, helps us draw near to him. Amen. So I encourage you to consider journaling. It doesn't have to be a daily thing. It could be a weekly thing. It could be a monthly thing. It could be a case-by-case -case thing. Uh, it could be a daily part of your life. There, But just consider if you need something to help you slow down and draw near to God, this might be something for you. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for, for giving us a hunger and a desire to seek you and to be with you. Help us to, to pray. Help us to fast. Help us to meditate on your word and to get away from all the hustle and bustle of life on a regular basis. And if journaling is something that would help us with that, if it will help us remember, if it will help us to be healthier spiritually, uh, as well as physically and emotionally, if it helps us to, to grow, if it helps us in our relationship with you, then help us do it. 
um, and teach us and show us. Almighty God, we, we just want you and want you more and more and more. So help us with this. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So journaling, another spiritual discipline. And uh, if you have any questions on that or not sure how to get started, or um, reach out and we'd love to help you with that. All right. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. We're so glad that you did. Remember, God loves you and so do we.